Amateur radio, also known as ham radio, uses the radio frequency spectrum to be able to communicate to a wide variety of people around the globe. This could also be via radio sports, non-commercial exchange of messages or emergency communication. Nowadays we sit in the digital age where you can connect with someone from your fingertips in a second. But if we go back to a period, say the 1970s, ham radio was the primary method of communication in the Falcon Islands, in what many are saying is the predecessor to social media. It was a, a huge form of communication around the islands. Um, people started to put them in their vehicles, got licenses, put up antennas at their houses, on their farms. If you were travelling across the camp and you got bogged in, it was there would be always somebody that would hear your call and could put in a um, put in a um, call to somebody to give you help. The internet and other easier forms of communication have certainly taken over, but aerials and antennae still proudly sit above the houses. Bob McLeod is a frequent user of ham radio, who last year spoke to over 23,000 people around the globe. Very fine at Papa Radio 7, Charlie Papa Kilo, Victor Papa 8, Lima Papa. We are 100% copy, a good, very, very nice signal here into the Falkland Islands. So 73's Ed, thank you very much. There's basically two sort of systems. One is what they call search and pounce, where you tune around to you find somebody calling or or in a conversation that you find interesting, or you just call a general call, which is in the amateur world known as CQ. So you just find a clear frequency and you call, and you call until somebody uh, uh, decides they want to, to contact you. And that's the way I operate. To, to me, it's, it's just generally a hobby. It's, uh, an ever-developing hobby and if you don't keep up with the times uh, you, know, you you sort of lose out. Whereas Bob uses his radio to connect with as many people as possible another method is called moon bouncing. The radio signal transmitted hits the moon and reflects back to the earth to be received by another person. Due to the equipment being rather specialist, there are very few moon bouncers around, but there is one transmitter in Stanley, which is capable of doing this in the form of communication. So the challenge to communicate via the moon is probably one of the most difficult parts of the, um, of the hobby. I'd be happy to do one or two contacts per year. Basically, I transmit a signal from uh, um, encoded with a computer, goes through the radio, uh, the radio goes through the amplifier, the antenna pointing at the moon, you wait for the right conditions and you try and try and try until you get it. Because what gets to the other end is a very, very minute signal that they have to be decoded by the person at the other end. Uh, transmission takes one minute and then you receive him for one minute and you do that uh, for about uh, three, four times, which completes the contact at the end if it's all favourable. Ham radio equipment is still rather essential for boats and off-roaders. Boat enthusiast Andres Short was even part of record-breaking history in the Falklands. His signal, transmitted just offshore at Carcass Island, travelled over 500 kilometres to reach his intended destination at Walker Creek passing through a variety of sites in the Falklands. I used as a form of communication when I'm out on the boat, so it gives me the enjoyment of that. There's also a safety aspect from it. Quite often I'm lucky enough to find a ham radio operator that is living in the port where I'm heading for, and consequently that's a great help because there's somebody that knows the place, so you've instantly got a lift with where to find customs, where to find this, that and the other. S but it's also fun when you're out chatting to different parts of the world and, and that. Whilst Andres was offshore on his boat, the Kelper, I even gave ham radio a go. 
But before you can operate a radio set, you must apply for a license. Hi Andres, um, I'm just wondering, ham radio then? For someone that is not aware of ham radio or amateur radio, I mean, what would you tell um, them who are looking to get involved with, with the radio? It's more of a hobby now than a necessity in the past. I think a lot of people, particularly in the camp, still use it when they're out uh, gathering sheep and such like. But uh, certainly not as many people on the bands now that used to be. A VP8 Alpha, VP8 NE, man's ammo box. For potential radio enthusiasts, there is a club set up so people can stay connected through this historic form of communication, which has played a major part in Falkland's heritage. Uh, it's the best hobby uh, a person can have and uh, literally I strongly recommend it for anybody. If you want to know more about ham radio, join the radio club. It's the best um, investment you can do in your life.